Father Martin asked me to give a little reflection tonight. Um, since this afternoon and earlier yesterday, we began some preliminary vocation meetings with the vocation directors. Um, tomorrow, of course, we start with the summit and <clears throat> we'll uh, have a much bigger group of people to work and sew together. But he repeated more than once this one phrase, so, so, and so. <clears throat> At least that's what I heard. <clears throat> so I've chosen this passage with the hope that we will draw some light for our vocation summit meetings and for our own vocations. <clears throat> now this whole chapter really, chapter 13 of St. Matthew, is a series of parables that talk about sowers and seed. So I would highly recommend for your prayer to not limit yourself to this one short passage. First important observation, the sower <clears throat> is the son of man. I really tried hard to find a passage where I was the sower. It wasn't there. The sower is the son of man. And that's actually really good news. Because, well, it's a great relief, especially if you're a vocation director or if you're a novice. The sower is Jesus, and he sows seeds of Christian life and grace and conversion and, yes, even vocation. But since he calls us to help as disciples and apostles and priests and missionaries to build this kingdom of seeds that grow and multiply and produce fruit and all the rest, then we too must sow. In fact, we also harvest. But I won't get into that side. We're going to stick with so, so, so. Because you can't harvest anything if you haven't sown. Well, unless somebody else has sown. And I would say many of us who stand before you or sit behind you Many of us were seeds that were planted by other sowers. And when the legion came along, the legion harvested us. But in today's world, in today's church, we can't just harvest. We must sow. Because there's another sower out there that's mentioned here in today's gospel. And... Uh, He's kind of bad news. And he sows bad seed. Weeds, the children of the evil one. There's plenty of that out there. And we can see it in our own lives. So who's going to sow more? Him? Or us? Jesus, yes, is the sower. So whenever we cooperate in sowing seeds, he's at work. That's a great relief. He guarantees the quality of the seeds, the seeds of grace and the seeds that produce eternal life, that, that, that have within them the capacity to live forever are meant to forever produce life and love. So that would be the first reflection that we could maybe deepen during this, this Eucharistic hour. But a couple other points that might be helpful. <clears throat> the field is the world. Now, wherever we find ourselves is the world, right? There's 
potential for growth throughout the world. I was really taken back when I went to the Holy Land last summer for the first time and saw just how dry and arid the land is there, <clears throat> except for maybe, you know, around the Jordan River where it's lush and green. But every part of the world has a capacity to give life. At least that's its potential. So wherever we are, that field can produce if it's worked. It's funny, I've noticed here in New England, you'll see a lot of stone walls. Where do they come from? And they're not in big fields, they're smaller fields. But the first people who came through here and began to plant crops found very rocky ground. And so they would gather all the rocks and build walls to delineate their property. And then they'd go about sowing seeds. I don't know about you, but I, I was very rocky ground once upon a time. Still have fair amount of rocks. I won't talk to you about my gallbladder, that's another story. <laughs> but the field needs to be worked. So much of it's rocky and hardened and full of weeds. Good soil only comes about when it's been cared for by the farmer. <clears throat> Third observation, the good seed is the children of the kingdom. Now again, this seed is essentially good, guaranteed by the sower, you might say. So every person that we encounter is destined for wonderful growth, productive living. But alone, they're, they'll wither and die. And, and I think of my own formators throughout years of, of legionary formation and how they had to look at me and probably prayed for a long time to be able to say, yeah, we can, we can make something of him. Because if you think about it, at least the novices are closest to this reality, the amount of attention and detail and focus and dedication that your formators put into you is seconded, I mean, it, it's comparable maybe only to your mother's. When you were too young to know what you were doing, hours and days and weeks and months and years of formation go into making you children of the kingdom. You know, I, I can't help this, this is the image that, uh, that I kept going back to as I was reflecting on this passage. There's a priest who I used to visit pretty regularly. Um, it's a, he's a, a chaplain and, and pastor of a, a small parish, but a lot of, uh, but it's a university parish. And he's a great man theologically and in every way, uh, a great preacher, um, really, uh, loves liturgy, um, and he's, a, he's one of the leading priests in the diocese, and, and I'd stay with him, and one of the pastimes that he developed was that of a garden. Now, this is somewhere in Florida, so you can imagine everything grows in Florida. But the amount of time and dedication that he put into his flowers was amazing. I mean, he had, I think, one of the best gardens in town. He knew when he planted the seeds, he placed it just in the right place. And he placed them one by one. And of course, he had to work the soil first. And then he would care for them. He would water those seeds and he would fertilize them. And he knew what ones to put in the shade and what ones to put in the sun. And then, it's interesting because he'd, he'd kind of like choreograph the... <laughs> the garden, he'd have it all planned out so different colors would come up and would combine in different ways. He was like an artist.
I think there's a secret hidden somewhere in here about how we have to be very, very intentional in our prayers and in our apostolic work. Because God doesn't plant seeds alone. And he doesn't go, and what's, what's typical image of a sower, right? No! That's not how God does it. He takes every seed and he puts it into the ground. Individually, in the right place, at the right time. How do I live my prayer life? Yeah, I'll just throw some prayers out there. How do I live my apostolic life? It, it's, the two are going to be, one flows from the other. And if we are called to help, to harvest, to bring in the harvest, the harvest is great, but the labors are few. The Lord says, pray for harvest. Yes, but before he did that, he was probably saying, Father, help us sow. We have to be very committed. It's not, it's not easy work. Most farmers don't see fruit for months on end. We get into the division, we plant a seed, and we go like, eh, nothing happened. I planted that yesterday. Brother. Hmm. Uh, vocation work takes patience, too. And the first seed that we have to take care of is this one, right? I think there's a lot here. Two more quick thoughts, and I'm going to leave you in peace with our Lord. Seeds grow. So if the soil needs to be worked, what does that mean in my life right now? We can apply that to vocation work, but let's right now apply it to our own vocation. What needs to be worked? You have to work the ground all the time. What's the watering that I have to give to my vocation? What's the water it thirsts for? What's the sun it needs? And I think if we do it well with our own souls, our own hearts, our own, our own vocations, we can hope to, to work in his farm, to be good sowers. Oh, weeding. My mom had a garden. I never learned a lot about gardening, you probably can tell. Never learned a lot, but one thing I did as a kid was mom always wanted her garden to be weeded, which meant the weeds would come up and you had, I know there's another parable here that kind of talks about, I know, no, just leave it, leave it alone, but I'm not gonna get into that. So most gardens need to be weeded because we all know that we're imperfect and there's a lot of elements in our lives that move in the wrong direction and would choke our vocation if we allow it to. Weeding is hard work. You gotta to try to get the root and you usually don't. But weeding allows freedom for growth. And isn't that what all of us experience as we enter into our legionary life? More and more freedom to grow. And that's why vocation work requires vocation meetings. <laughs> because, let's face it, there's not a lot of freedom for growth in the world today. There's a lot of weeds. But there's also a lot of hope. Because remember, the seed is from the Lord. And he's the sower. And he doesn't sow without hope, without love, without looking at that seed and saying, there's great potential there. Let's ask him to teach that to us because in the end the seeds that we sow those that we harvest beginning with our own hearts our own souls our own vocations are meant to shine like the sun whoever has ears ought to hear